Hi, I'm Daniel, and this is video two in how to convert an old organ into a MIDI controller. The reason you do that is so that you can play virtual instruments, such as the Helptworks software, which has multiple sample sets from all different organs around the world. Minuet and Trio by Joseph Haydn. <laughs> So last video we saw how the uh, switches worked on the keys and how it's arranged in a matrix. Now what we didn't talk about is these components which are diodes. These are crucial elements for the matrix arrangement. So we'll be explaining uh, what the diodes do and how to check which way the diodes face in your particular organ. And just for context, this is an example of a microcontroller. This is a Arduino Mega. So there you've got the CPU in the middle, that's what does all the work. This is a USB which powers it, and then each of these little pins are all the inputs or outputs. So there's most of them are digital inputs, and these are the ones we need to use to interface the keyboard uh, with the microcontroller. So here's the matrix arrangement that we talked about last time. Now just imagine that this one here is set to 0 volts, and this one here is set to 5 volts. So if you press the E key on the keyboard, you will then get 5 volts at pin 2 on the microcontroller. But what happens if someone's playing B and E at the same time? Then 5 volts will be connected to 0 volts and you'll have a dead short. And so a lot of current is going to start flowing up here. So this is a problem. And the way to solve this problem is the use of diodes. What a diode is, is a one-way valve for electricity. So here's the diodes, there'll be a little black bar on one end. So let me draw the symbol. So this is the symbol of a diode. So current can flow this way, but current cannot flow that way. And so that black bar can tell you, um, on, on the diodes, the black bar tells you which way the electricity flows because the diode will look like this and we'll have a black bar. Electricity will flow that way but it can't flow that way because it'll be blocked by the bar so to speak. And so to solve the problem that we talked about we have to put diodes here so that current can't actually flow back up here. So put a diode there. So now, if B and E are pressed, 5 volts will uh, be here, so current will flow down here, but it can't go up to 0 volts if the B is also pressed. And so therefore, you'll get 5 volts at uh, pin 2. So every, every single one needs a diode, so I'll draw them in. And there we have our completed circuit for the matrix arrangement.
with our diodes in place. When you look at our keyboards, there's two different directions the diodes can be. The diodes can actually be facing up or facing down. And that is a very critical thing to understand. So let's talk now about how microcontrollers work uh, with their pins. So here's a Arduino Mega. Uh, this is not the microcontroller I've used on my organ, but you could use this one. And there's all these digital pins. Now all these digital pins have the ability to be outputs or inputs. If they're outputs, they either set the voltage to five volts or zero volts or ground. If they're inputs, it can detect what voltage is present at the pin. So each of these pins is capable of being a input or an output. Now there's three different types of inputs that microcontrollers can have. They can have what's called a floating input, they can have a pull-up resistor input, or a pull-down resistor input. Uh, most commonly, microcontrollers will have these two. Uh, some adva more advanced microcontrollers might also give you this option, and this is an option that you can configure in the program of the software. Floating is literally like a wire floating in space. You don't know what voltage a piece of wire floating in the air has. It could be a thousand volts, it could be zero volts, it could be minus a thousand volts, you just don't know, it's floating. If, however, you get a resistor and you connect that resistor to five volts, if, if, this, if this is not connected to anything here, then this will be five volts because uh, there is no current will be flowing through the resistor and then this will become five volts. If you connect this to ground, current will flow from 5 volts down to ground and the voltage will drop across the resistor so this will become ground. If we then get rid of the ground, no current will flow and there will be no voltage drop across the resistor and so therefore this will become 5 volts. And so a pull-up resistor means, by adding this pull-up resistor, means that you always have either 0 or 5 volts. You never have some sort of unknown quantity uh, of voltage. In this case, you don't actually know what the voltage is. So if you ask the CPU in the, in the code and you say, what is the voltage? It could give you random readings. It could be five volts, it could be zero volts. It, it actually depends on the electromagnetism of the air around it. So probably this, the voltage in a floating input is probably uh, following the voltage of the circuit in your wall by electromagnetic induction. But if you add a pull up resistor, it pulls the voltage up to five volts when it's not connected to anything. But then if you connect it to ground, it then, this becomes ground and current flows through the resistor. Now this is a very high resistance, so it doesn't use much power. Its purpose is to um, tie the voltage here to 5 volts when there's nothing connected and enable you to um, bring it down to ground if you connect ground. The pull down resistor is exactly the same concept, it just pulls this down to ground through a resistor so then <coughs> if you connect 5 volts here it will um, remain at 5 volts whereas if you get rid of the 5 volts it'll uh, be at ground. Okay so another important thing that you need to understand is that um, this is all within the CPU chip, so that there is all within the microcontroller. Uh, same here, that's all within the microcontroller. And this is simply something you can turn on and off. So it's not like you have to um, add your own resistors or 5 volts. This is just a function that you can turn on and off. But in reality, this is what is actually happening happening inside the chips. This here represents simply the um, connection point uh, on the microcontroller. Here's a picture of the circuit board behind the organ manual. Labelled is where the diodes are on the circuit board. Now, of course, they're on the other side of the PCB board, and you can also see where the switches are. So I've drawn in the diodes. The black bar on the diodes is pointing away from the switches. So that's the direction of the diodes on my particular organ. So this is what you need to check on your organ to see what way the diodes are. Okay, so here's the arrangement of my organ with the diodes facing this way. How does this system work? Well, at the top here, we've got our microcontroller with the CPU. 
Now, I've configured input 1 and input 2, or pin 1 and pin 2, as inputs with a pull-up resistor, which like we talked about before, pull-up resistor. So these are configured as inputs. So let's put our inputs. That's an input. Input with a pull-up resistor. So if ground is applied here, then this line will go to ground. If ground is not applied and it's simply floating as it is now, because all these switches are open, this will simply be at five volts. No voltage drop will be across the resistor. So this will all be at five volts. But what if we close one of these switches? What happens then depends on the state of pins three, four, and five. Let's say we set them all as inputs and make them floating. That's like a wire in space. So these are all floating. Okay, so we close switch A, and then that means current can flow down here, but this is floating. So again, it's, it's no different to having the switch open because it's floating. So if all these pins are set to floating, this will always stay at five volts, no matter what key you press. Press any of these keys, these are all just floating. It's as if they're connected to nothing. It's like a wire floating in the air. That'll all just stay at five volts because of this pull-up resistor. Okay, so what then if we keep f pin four and pin five as floating input type, but then we change pin three to be a output and set the output level to ground. <clears throat> so if we close switch B, this will just remain at five volts because pin four is floating. But if we close switch A, then this pin has been set to ground. And so current will flow from five volts, the voltage will drop across this resistor and then flow down to ground. And so then this here we'll see a change from five volts down to zero volts and the microcontroller can detect that. Okay, so then what if we set three back to float and we make four ground? Well then if we press key E, then current is gonna flow down through here. It can go this way through the, through the diode. It'll flow down here, the current can't go up this way. It'll flow down to ground in pin four. And so therefore you'll see a change from five volts down to zero volts. And again, you know that uh, pin four is set to ground and pin two has seen a change. Therefore, you know that key E has been pressed. So this is exactly how my organ works. It's important to note that this is just a schematic. And so I've shown two microcontrollers here, but there's really just one microcontroller. And there's pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, pin 4, pin 5 of the same microcontroller. Another thing to note is this is just showing like two rows and three columns. But as we talked about in our last video, in reality, we have um, many, many more rows and many more columns. So when it comes to programming the microcontroller, we're going to be setting these as inputs with pull-up resistors. These here are going to be set as either inputs floating or output set to ground. So these are the different states that we're going to be defining in the programming of the microcontroller. What about the case where you're diodes are facing the other way. So here's the case of my organ. The diodes are facing this way so the current can flow down. But what if your organ is like this and the diodes are facing that way so the current can only flow this way? It simply means that you need to reverse the way that the system operates. So these here need to be the inputs with pull-up resistors. These ones need to be either inputs, floating, or an output set to ground. How does it work in this case? Well, if these are all set to inputs with a pull-up resistor, the only way that you're going to read anything other than 5 volts on these lines 
is if one of these lines is connected to ground. So let's say we make this one here an output and set it to ground. And this one here we make float, connected to nothing. So if we switch switch B, we're now going to get ground connected to here. And so current can flow out of the 5 volts through the diode this way, back up here to ground. And then you'll be able to detect that key B is pushed. Now if per chance key E is pushed at the same time, nothing's going to happen because this is just float. So that's why you only ever have one of these set to output at any one time and the rest are always at float. So what if key C is pressed? Well, then the same thing. You, the current will flow from five volts through here down to ground and then this, the voltage will drop across the resistor and then you'll be able to detect ground instead of five volts at the CPU. So whether you're using this system with the diodes facing this way or whether you're using this system with the diodes facing up, the same principles apply. It just uh, depends uh, which pins you need to set to which on the microcontroller. Thank you for watching. Next video we'll be talking about how to actually program the microcontroller and then probably about how to debounce the switches to get rid of noise. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and if you have any questions about how to convert your organ, please leave it in the comments. Thank you.